Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. We're going to get started in a few minutes. I just wanted to remind um, everyone as they kind of come in and out that the chat function is on the right hand side that you are on right now. Right below it is the question, um, the question tab. So please, if you have any questions during this, we'll answer them as soon as we can right after. Um, but please put place your questions there. We do have a poll. So the third tab on your right, go ahead and um, do the poll whenever you get the chance this morning or before we start or during it. Um, so you should be good to go. We don't have any files uploaded, so you don't have to worry about that. So, but please use the second tab on the right-hand side for your questions so that we can get to them um, just in case they get lost in the chat. Um, please collaborate with each other. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and um, say where you're from. Welcome. We'll get started in the next couple of minutes. When you type, introduce yourself to me. Hey, Craig. Thanks for joining us. Noosa Board, West Valley City, Utah. Thanks for joining. Happy to have you guys. We'll get started in just a few minutes to give an opportunity for everyone to jump on. Good morning, Catherine. <laughs> Good morning, Cheryl. Hi, Craig. Thank you all for joining us. Okay, I'm going to be in here. Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ruth Aussie, and with me here is Brenda Pinner. We are two community engagement liaisons um, with the city of Fort Worth. And today, um, we're going to be talking about how engagement starts with us. Um, and the us in this case is city staff. Um, you're going to learn about a work group that me and Brenda um, collaborated together along with our office and other city departments to create. And we hope that you take away from it. We'll answer all questions at the very end. Um, we're both monitoring the chat and doing the presentation at the same time. So make sure that you do use the questions tab that's on your right hand side and it's the second tab and make sure to leave any comments in the chat because we'll be happy to read them after as well. So um, before we get started, we just wanted to give you guys a breakdown of what the city of Fort Worth looks like and why this work group was so important for us to start um, because it really started with, um, with our demographics. Good morning, everyone. Hey, El Paso and Waco and everyone else that's come in. So as you can kind of see, um, one of the focuses that we're, we're kind of looking at was where the city of Fort Worth is in general. Um, we are the 13th largest um, city and the United States and growing. So we're trying to keep up with everything, but as you can kind of see 36.4 out of the population um, as of 2019 was Hispanic, right? And so you can kind of see on the bar graphs, we can't see it on our end, um, but I think it was like 25 or 27 um, percent on there. But this is not counting the census information that has come out. So we know that it's grown a lot more. Um, and you can see that the foreign born population within the city of Fort Worth um, is at 65.3%. So um, one of the focuses that we have in, as you can see the types of languages that are spoken, um, the second largest on there is Spanish. And so I think this um, information really comes out because of that. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. 
So in comparison, we really want to highlight um, what our employee demographic information looks like. The city of Fort Worth, um, as of 2020, and this has changed, of course, um, has 6,691 employees. Out of all those employees, 4,860 live in Tarrant County. So the surrounding cities around Fort Worth are probably 10 to 15 minutes away, and 3,213 employees not only work, but live in the city of Fort Worth. Um, out of all those employees, um, 637 of them receive bilingual pay for speaking Spanish. This means that um, the city pays them a stipend every month uh, for either reading or writing or being able to speak to customers in Spanish or doing both. So just taking a look at the Fort Worth employees, and um, this is as of January 2021, but it's constantly changing. You can see that the citywide totals are at 25.4% um, that are Hispanic, right? And so if you kind of take a look at the next few down, these are constantly changing. We are always um, getting more um, people who speak Spanish and are Hispanic in general, especially police with their new recruits, um, as well as fire. So. As far as general employees, you can see that um, it's a little small on my end, but I think it's 29.9%. So um, this is kind of one of the focuses that we see is because we we do live um, and work for the city of Fort Worth. And I think it's a big um, looking at the workforce and how many people actually um, may provide these services and communicate with residents in general is a big deal. So you may be thinking, how does... Uh your demographic information for the city and your employees matter to you and matter how um, we're engaging with our community. Um, just to give you a little breakdown of our office, um, we office out of uh, our communications department under communications and public engagement. We have the communicate community engagement office and we have six liaisons in our office who are all tasked with a different part of the city. Our job is to be a liaison for those neighborhood associations, to be the experts in, in their area, uh, but also provide education and presentations for not only the schools, but for adults. Um, we also collaborate with other city departments to make sure that we are attending public meetings and getting this information out to our neighborhoods. Um, as you can imagine, we stay pretty busy with 300 registered neighborhood organizations. Outside of that, we also have special projects. Me and Brenda are the two liaisons in our office that are bilingual and Spanish speaking. So we're tasked with Hispanic outreach. And this has grown vastly since I started with the city. Um, we used to do presentations in Spanish and I, I think we've grown that number um, a lot. And when we go out and do education and presentations, this is information regarding um, City Hall 101, civics, um, solid waste programs that we have, stormwater, and really connecting Spanish-speaking residents with other services that the city has. Um, oftentimes, we do take guest speakers with us um, and collaborate with other departments to make their services known. We also provide um, translations for our neighborhood organizations. If they are struggling with Hispanic outreach, this is something that our office can help them with. Um, and it's something that we have really focused on and have been really strategic about um, when we're engaging uh, new neighborhood organizations or we're, when we're working to re-engage them. Um, we also provide translations for other city departments. Um, I think one thing that has happened since Brenda and I took this role is that we started noticing that maybe some departments are not using verbiage that is um, easy to understand by Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. So we're making sure that whenever this information goes out that we're reporting back to those departments to make sure that they use appropriate language. We also have a community engagement bulletin. Um, this bulletin goes out with city news, events, public meetings that are happening all around the city. It goes out every Thursday to all of our neighborhood leaders. Um, so we told you we have about 300 uh, neighborhood associations, so you can times that times five, and that's how many people receive this bulletin. It is their job as neighborhood leaders to then send this information out to 
their neighbors, whether they put it on Facebook, next door, um, share it on their newsletters, we expect them to share this information. What me and Brenda started doing about maybe two years or a year and a half ago mm -hmm. is started providing our the news stories that are in our community engagement bulletin in Spanish. We translate every city news story that we have um, that doesn't already come in Spanish. I think we've seen a shift with a lot of departments and already making sure that they're providing uh, this information in Spanish. But those who don't, we all translate it for them. And we also provide a PDF summary to make it easy for our residents and our neighborhood leaders to send this information out uh, by a click of a button. And we've also increased our collaboration with Spanish speaking faith based organizations and area agencies, um, as well as other networking groups like the Hispanic Chamber or the Hispanic Wellness Coalition here in Fort Worth. So one of the things right before we started is what what, what, do, what do we do about this? We keep seeing um, different things. We keep getting feedback from um, Hispanic residents. You know, I don't understand this or how can I get this information in Spanish? And so it kind of got us thinking and we were like, well, what about um, getting people within the departments together, right? Um, but how do we do that? So one of the things was just kind of searching how we could do that, reaching out for HR like, um, Ruth mentioned was um, we have in the city of Fort Worth, we have people getting paid to read, write, and speak Spanish. So why not try to find that list, which we got connected to, and let's see what we can do from there. So we kind of brainstormed how we would do this and kind of um, got this, you know, flyer started um, circling, circling around in our heads. And we were like, okay, so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce ourselves, um, kind of let them know what we're doing, um, send out this mass email to these employees who get paid to speak Spanish and, and connect with residents in Spanish. And so we we're kind of like, okay, we need to find a, a location that is um, easy, accessible for everyone to kind of come in and get together. We're going to do it during the lunch hour. So it's not something extra that they have to do at the end of the day um, or kind of just like scurry, right? We'll provide lunch for you. Just come and join us and collaborate and see what we can kind of find out. And so that's exactly what happened. We sent this um, flyer out. Um, we emailed that to all the employees on that bilingual pay list. Um, about 54 employees RSVP'd. Some were kind of still skeptical, like, what is this? I don't know. I'm too busy for that, you know. But at least 45 employees attended. And what happened was that connection and that collaboration, everyone was kind of excited, like, hey, what, you know, this is, this hasn't existed. You know, what's kind of going on? What can we do? Um, and then we kind of started brainstorming from there, you know, um, learning about each other's departments. You know, uh, Ruth and I do work within different departments, you know, and assisting and kind of we have to help, you know, learn some of those things as well. And so it kind of helped connect others to each other as well and kind of like, well, I didn't know that that program was available. And so, um, you know, kind of that we've, what we found out is, I mean, a lot of people were excited to kind of just have their information out there and kind of connect with each other and kind of just be able to provide what services that they did. And if they are doing Spanish um, or how, how much they actually speak to Spanish speaking residents. And when we started um, the idea of a Hispanic work group, it was really that just an idea. We didn't um, necessarily have um, the permission from our city manager to create this group. Um, it was born out of our office and we just wanted to test the waters we send out some feelers, we send out the flyer, uh, made a sign up sheet to see how many employees would really be interested. We thought, you know, doing it during lunch, the lunch hour, we didn't know um, how managers or directors were gonna perceive this idea. So we decided to provide lunch, do it at a time where maybe they could just come even without having to let their managers know that they that employees were gonna come out to this meeting. Try to do it at a central location so it wouldn't be too much of a far drive. Um, mm -hmm. And La Voz Hispana de Fort Worth was born. Um, this is a name that our employees voted on, and it translates over to the Hispanic voice of Fort Worth, which I think is 
a really accurate name. Um, as we mentioned before, our employees live in the city of Fort Worth. Um, and oftentimes they go back and tell their family members of what's happening within the city. Um, I don't know how many city employees we have um, with us today, but you can send us a little hand up in the chat if you are a city employee. But how many times have you been asked, oh, you work for the city, right? Like you should know when bulk collection is. You should know what's happening with other city departments. And the truth is a lot of times our city employees are not aware of what's happening with other departments. We are really missing a collaboration piece. So this group has not only helped bridge that gap to now we're communicating, we're talking about what we're doing and how we can better serve our Hispanic customers. We have had 12 meetings since August of 2019. We've tried to be really consistent in having the meeting at the same time of the month um, every, every year or every month, I apologize. And we've moved to virtual meetings since June of 2020. So our participation usually ranges from 30 to 50 attendees per meeting. Um, and this is really great, considering that at every meeting we have a new employee. Um, there's a new phase in our group that wasn't there previously. And moving to virtual meetings because of COVID um, has allowed us to be able to record the meetings and to reach a bigger audience because now employees don't have to leave their desk or they can eat lunch and be watching the meeting or have it in the background as they're working on other things to be able to participate. We have had several department managers and directors that have served as guest speakers. And we went from asking directors and asking managers to be a part of our group to them reaching out to us and saying, hey, I would really like to come out and speak to your group and get um, the opinions of, of these employees. So we've had one community event, and in this one community event, we had nine city departments represented, and I'm gonna let Brenda talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, and so basically, I mean, the, the mission is to help these um, Hispanic um, workers engage, right? Um, a lot of us, like I said before, live and work within the city, and we really encourage to use those resources as well. If you and your family are needing it, note that you can, um, you know, use these services, use the library, use the community centers, um, use the, um, the resources that we'll kind of talk about here in a little bit. But um, there's a glitch. And so on our end, it doesn't show the Spanish version, but we do have a Spanish front and back for these um, city services here. So at one of the meetings, we kind of thought, hey, you know, all of our brains together, what can we do to bring our services to the community, right? We're always constantly talking about, well, they need to come here and do this. Well, residents need to find, this is where they can find me. They're not going to find that at City Hall, right? And so one of the things was, how can we bring this and reach out to residents in general, right? Where can we meet them where they're at right now? And kind of help educate, right? Provide these services, educate them, whatever whatever was needed. And so we kind of um, threw in together, let's do a city services fair. So we had um, different departments kind of, hey, like I wanna have a table, let's do this. We had about nine departments, um, anywhere from library, fair housing, um, with diversity and inclusion, the police, um, animal control, code enforcement, um, all of these services were there, right? So the only thing that we asked was have at least one Spanish speaking person at your table. So you can have anywhere from one person to four people representing that table. And so we were like, okay, well, where do we want to have this? So fortunately we have um, Officer Segura and who he is, is he is um, basically like the Spanish public speaker, right? He has a Spanish media platform. He has the uh, Facebook, Instagram, anything that he can get the word out in Spanish. Um, he does that, right? So whether it's collaborating with us or different departments or, hey, this is going on with the water department, let's do a, a quick Facebook Live about it so that we can do, um, we can send this out to residents, right? So thankfully he has those connections with, with La Grande Plaza. And what La Grande Plaza is, it's basically like a Hispanic mall. You can find people uh, making leather in there, boots, 
Um, you can find quinceanera dresses there. You can find great food, a lot of Hispanic stores, great food, um, uh, Mexican candy, stuff like that, right? And so it's kind of like a variety of everything. It's two stories. And one of the good things about that as well is that we do have city services within um, an area of La Grande Plaza. So they have anywhere from Parks and Rec. Um, I'm not sure if Neighborhood Services is still there, but they had a portion of neighborhood services and then they're actually going to be moving um, one of the library um, the libraries in there to to help kind of um, get that access right so we focused on the grand plaza and like i said we we all had like a table there was already an event going on there anyways so we kind of focused it in and around that right how can we reach people and us come to them where they're already at so as you can see, it was a 4 to 8 p.m. Um, time that we did a uh, service. And what we had was, I mean, it, it got people curious, like, okay, well, I see all the Mollies, which is the city of Fort Worth logo. And they were like, okay, they have all this stuff going. Library had their fun stuff, you know, where kids can come in and win prizes. We had different information anywhere. From, I mean, you could get pins, you could get um, just basic flyers, right? Because some people just moved to the city so they're like well i don't even know when my bulk trash is right we're like here you can have this with the with this information in spanish and english or you just refer them to the next table um or the appropriate table for them right so it was um really great really great feedback we were able to reach you know uh, and a lot of people were like i don't know how to do this or you know um that was when my fort worth was kind of coming in and what my fort worth is it's like a free app where you can sit, take a picture of something, say there's like illegal dumping, or say there's a sign thrown that somebody hit. You can take a picture of that with that Fort Worth app and send it to the correct department. And it's kind of like a faster way to get those, um, those issues resolved, right? So um, we were kind of able to meet them where they're at, which was super great. And then as well as if any city employee needed that information or any family member needed that, they'd be able to pass that along as well. So one thing um, that I want to mention is oftentimes we get neighborhood leaders or other city staff saying, you know, I'm inviting um, my Spanish speaking neighbors to this event and they just don't come out. They're not, they don't want to engage. There's a language barrier, there's a cultural barrier. Um, so one thing that we, I think, did with with this event with um, the City Services Fair is bring an event to the community. We didn't look for residents to come to an event where we picked a, a location where um, there may not, they may not know, of, right? We picked a location, we were strategic about the time that we were gonna be there. We were strategic about who we were collaborating with. Um, Brenda mentioned Officer Segura, and he has been really instrumental in helping us bridge the gap with the media. Um, one really good example of how it's going is that we have seen departments collaborate together. He has a really good connection with one of the, um, the Spanish-speaking stations with Telemundo, and they were hosting a phone bank, and they needed a time slot to fill. We had already created this group, so we were able to partner with Neighborhood Services and, and their team to talk about priority repair. And they went over to Dallas, started the phone bank, and got phone calls and got residents engaged in a service that they may not previously have had. So we like to take the little wins that we have, um, like the city services there, like the phone bank, to celebrate the little success, I think you have to take the wins because it can be really overwhelming to say, you know, we have a whole lot of Spanish speaking residents that we're not reaching. But what about those that, that we are? Because they go back and speak to their families. Um, and we know from being a part of that community that we talk and we gather, um, and that's something that we like to do. And we like to share information and resources. So um, how it's going, Department directors see us as an asset and want our opinion. We've had several um, program managers and directors come to our meetings. And what they do is explain their, their roles, 
right? They talk about their division or their department, explain every single program they have under the moon, and then we have a Q&A. One thing that we ask them is, how can our group help you with your outreach efforts? Whether it's just giving ideas, whether it's collaborating together for an event, uh, they want to hear our opinions. So that has been really encouraging and really vital for our group uh, because now you have a group of city employees who are admins, who work in the field in water or transportation and public works, who didn't have that platform before and nobody was asking them what they thought and how they should communicate with their own community. So it's been really, really cool for us to see that grow and those partnerships develop. There's an increase in departmental collaborations, like I mentioned before, and we love it when people know the name of our office. We love it when they say, oh, you can just call community engagement, they can help connect you. And we have had more staff reach out to us and say, hey, like, I have this event happening. How do you think I can better promote it? Or who can I reach out to? Um, who can I collaborate with in the city to make this event great? And we continue to be a pivotal tool for engagement, um, especially during COVID-19. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to utilize our work group to do translations that our office really didn't have time for because we were being pulled into different directions. Um, we were able to compile a list of area agencies that serve uh, Hispanic residents and faith-based organizations to which they attended to. So our network grew even more when we were trying to collaborate and get messaging out. Uh, most recently, we had the director of our code department come out and speak to us about vaccinations for COVID-19 COVID vaccinations. Um, and it was really cool to see that he wanted our opinion. Some of the things that we threw out there were uh, doing vaccines on site for workplaces where they have a large Hispanic workforce, um, doing vaccination sites in grocery stores, um, doing neighborhood vaccination sites. And I'm not going to say the ideas came from us. We're not going to take all the credit. Um, but a few weeks later, we had community members who were telling us there was vaccination sites at grocery stores. We saw that there was a city news story about um, neighborhood vaccination sites. So that's really cool to see. And it really empowers an audience that wasn't being reached before um, with our employees. And another thing on that, you know, um, the the way that we are trying to reach, um, obviously it's the focus of how we're trying to reach that, but a lot of these ideas go go for anyone. You can use these ideas with, with any any uh, targeted group if you, um, if you, you know, you're trying to reach the Asian population and you have speakers, you know, or people that can actually translate that as well, you know, we encourage you to use that and use different ideas like that and use um, your departments um, that can that can do those things. Right. So what's next? Um, we're obviously looking at more collaborative events. And like like Ruth said, we, you know, we're, we're trying to be in the community more, you know, we obviously are um, with our neighborhood associations and HOAs and everything else. And sometimes, you know, when we do um, help with those public meetings and everything else, but we are trying to, to, to explore more ways to reach out to the community members and um, to see what else we can provide, right? So um, we're gonna continue to give feedback on everything. Um, we mentioned before it, you know, it's not just Spanish, right? We have um, people from Puerto Rico or Colombia or, you know, anything that you can kind of think of in all those language um, types of Spanish that we speak, we have to make everything accessible to where that neutral understanding of what something particularly means. Cause um, a sidewalk can, can be, Placed in what three different three different ways? So which one are, are we going to use? Which one do you feel comfortable using? And getting that um, consistency with with everyone that's using it, and it's different for every department. And so finding those consistencies and giving that feedback to each other. Um, transition. One of the things that we've really been thinking about is how are we going to keep this going? Are we? What do we? What can we do to transition 
um, this work group to an actual organization. And what we mean by an organization is, do we need to put, put some bylaws in place um, and not keep this in our office? Because the more collaboration we have and the more it's accessible to everybody else, we don't want to be in the front lines all the time, right? We don't want to be the ones having to, okay, because if we don't have time, then what happens, right? So we want to give the opportunity to other uh, city employees and departments to kind of step up and be part of the board and put their ideas more and be another face that people can kind of recognize and reach out to. And so those are kind of in the works right now, um, you know, just thinking about it, because if something happens, you know, um, how's it going to keep going? And so when you make it into an organization, it's it just kind of builds from there, right? You're, you're able to reach more capacity. Um, and so we encourage and empower um, to engage city staff. And so that's what we mean by that is if we make it into an organization, we feel people would have more opportunity for it. Um, we love and value everyone's ideas. So um, being able to do that is kind of going to be a, a big deal. And, you know, like, um, like Ms. Amethyst said, some of the greatest ideas you don't have to ask permission for, you know. So that's one of the big things that we're trying to work on right now. Um, and as we still continue to encourage um, city staff to, to use those resources as well, connect yourself with your own resources and kind of go from there. So we have definitely have time for your questions. If you have any thoughts, comments on what we're doing, what we can improve, this is um, kind of our baby. We haven't had um, a whole lot of time with it, probably about a, a year and a half or so that we've been working and then COVID kind of put a, um, a hold on a lot of the meetings that we were holding before we went to virtual. And we had a turnover um, in staff and the staff that we were seeing participating in the meetings has changed since then. Um, so we are looking forward to meeting with them again um, Hopefully they understand that we had to do new stuff so we couldn't host our meeting yesterday. But we look forward to providing them with your with your feedback and with your questions and, and your thoughts. Yeah. And I think a lot of the importance as well is our neighborhood associations that we have assisted in in the past in helping with those translations. A lot of the people don't they don't realize that they're doing this and I thank them for it. But a lot of them I've noticed that they have taken the time in to um, get someone and ask, you know, like, hey, you know, collaborate with me, be a part of this and get their own translations. And a lot of them, um, you really don't think about it, but they they are doing the work. They are asking those questions like, hey, how can I engage my neighborhood as well um, in doing Spanish speaking? And so a lot of the times if I go drive by or I'm doing um, something in that particular neighborhood, I'll see that a lot of the stuff that they put out is in Sp Spanish and English. Sometimes they'll do it, you know, they'll, they'll try their best to do it and be like, hey, can you print this for me and change anything and explain how, you know, why? So our neighbors and our leaders are definitely doing the work. Um, they're engaging more, which is great. Um, you know, like I said, as, as city employees, we, because we already somewhat know a lot of this, it's easier for us to pass along information. But if our um, city employees have that, just think of how many more that we can reach through our just our neighbors and our families. And one thing I want to mention before we um, ask the questions is, or answer your questions, is that even if you're a neighborhood leader um, and you're not within the city of Fort Worth, this is an idea that you can bring to your city and say, is this something that you're already doing? Are you having conversations about engaging Hispanic or minority residents? Um, what are the types of things and tools that you've utilized your employees for? Mm -hmm. So um, one of our questions here is Officer Segura with the police department. Um, yes, Officer Segura is with the um, City of Fort Worth Police Department, and he actually has a really wide audience um, and a really large Facebook following with the Hispanic community, not only within the City of Fort Worth, uh, but I hear even in Mexico City. So. Mm -hmm. Um, he's been really pivotal and has really pushed forward a positive relationship with the police department, um, with the Hispanic community. They really see him as an asset and as a resource. 
Um, he also handles all media relations with the police department, with the um, Spanish-speaking um, news okay. media. Let's see. Do several of your departments have their own public information officers, or is this a central point of contact? They do. A lot of um, um, different departments have their own. Some not so much. Um, it just depends on the sizing and everything else, but usually we can connect um, to a direct um, PIO and then just kind of go from there. I think that's the really unique thing about um, our office is that we're housed under the communications department. So we're able to easily connect with other communication specialists and give them ideas on what other um, city employees are thinking. So yes, we have communications uh, specialists with almost every department in our city. There's, there's a few that don't, like my friend mentioned. Did you like that? Yes, it was in the chat. Oh, okay. Do you work closely with your school districts and engage residents? Yeah, we do. We um, obviously we've had to move to virtual and, and everything else, but um, our within our districts that we do say, for example, I'm in the north, northeast and um, all of east side. Um, and then we kind of collaborate after under kind of stop six is kind of where Ruth comes in. And then so we're kind of like everywhere. But we do focus on those um, schools. So when career days come up, we are in there doing stuff. Parent as teachers programs, which are um, Spanish, um, we kind of help focus on those as well, whether it's giving them, you know, doing a small presentation for their child and then kind of focusing on them and kind of seeing what they're needing and just kind of helping educate and keep them connected. Like, hey, did you know you do have a neighborhood association here? This is when they meet, this is who you can contact. Um, you know, if you're needing Spanish, just say so, and you know, things like that. So, um, and that goes for all of our teachers as well. You know, all the presentations that we do, if they're in schools, they are, um, what, what is it called? TOS or TAX? TEKS. Um, correlated. Co correlated. So all that curriculum goes with the stuff that they're learning um, within certain different times of the year. Um, so anything that we do is correlated to, to what they're learning, whether it be the water cycle, um, about, you know, water pollution and, and stormwater, um, recycling, anything like that. And we also have a really positive relationship with Fort Worth Independent School District. Um, we have a good relationship with their family communications liaisons. Um, they will invite us to any fears that they're having. If there's an issue that a family is facing with the city, whether it's code or they just need connections and resources, a lot of times they'll refer them over our way. Um, one suggestion that I would give is that you find people within your ISD to connect with and have a conversation about how you can collaborate and engage with. A lot of our um, forward ISD staff um, was and did presentations, so we try to attend their meetings and collaborate with them as well. Um, another suggestion I have for that is we have found the ESL groups within our city and we'll reach out to them. We'll just send them an email and said, hey, uh, my name's Ruth, this is Brenda. Um, let's work together. Let's collaborate and um, we can do our Spanish or presentations in Spanish and we would love to come out. Um, we've had a really, we've been really successful in reaching out to those groups. And the first time that we'll go to an ESL group or a parent as teachers group, everybody's really timid um, they don't ask a whole lot of questions, but as we keep showing up, they'll even want to see the same presentations again, just because we've created such a positive relationship with them. We keep showing up. We all follow through on concerns that they're having to create that trust. Yeah. So whenever we do start to tell them about how they can engage with neighborhood associations, they know that uh, that's coming from a trusted source or that's coming from Brenda. And I know she'll follow through with what she's saying. I know that right. there's a good relationship there. Yeah, and even bring in other speakers, you know, um, when I do my, the Paul's presentation, which is um, Pets Are Worth It. And when I do that, you know, I'll bring um, Kayla Gonzalez with me, which is with uh, Animal Control, and she'll bring Henry the dog. So it's really just making that connection any way that you can, right? So if you're bringing a full dog, of course, everyone's going to 
want to pet that big old ham, right? So it's doing things like that and being able to bring other speakers. Sometimes they don't want to hear from you or you're like, okay, what else can we talk about? You know, but it's bringing and connecting them to other speakers and Spanish speakers like um, Shelly with uh, Code Enforcement and doing her um, uh, Code Ranger program and how they can, you know, what, you know, goes in, you know, if there's so much trash going on or there's um, vehicle, junk vehicles parked in, in a yard, you know, and, and it starts becoming an eyesore, you know, it's kind of things like that where you can connect them to other smaller groups or that they can engage in different ways as well. So another question from Julie is, how do you gain support of managers to let their employees participate on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I can take that question. Um, like we mentioned before, it was something that, an idea that came out of our office um, after we held our first initial meeting, then we reached out to managers and supervisors and said, hey, we reached out to everybody who receives bilingual pay. Do you know which ones of your employees are receiving bilingual pay? Did you know that this was an option for you that you can put in your budget? Or are you even utilizing your employees to be able to do translations and to participate in this new work group. Um, because the city has turnover in managers and directors, a lot of them were not aware that they had employees that were receiving bilingual pay. So they were outsourcing their translations or they were asking other, uh, other departments to maybe do some of their outreach material and translate that over or interpret whenever they have employees that are actually getting paid for that work. So that was a really good um, thing for us to see and for managers to know that this exists. It has to be something that we continue doing um, as we're, as our city changes, as it grows, as employees leave and come, we often have to refresh our list, our email list and send it out again and say, hey, um, I know maybe you asked to be removed from this list, but just wanna let you know that we are still here, we're still going. Um, and for new managers, that's something that we really emphasize as well whenever our office first gets to meet with them. Yeah, for sure. So what are the requirements to organize a neighborhood association in Fort Worth? So I know Catherine um, placed our um, our website on there, uh, fortworthtexas.gov slash engagement. So if you go on there, um, there's a tab that says organization. And that kind of lists all the all the requirements that we have honestly though we require um you just to have one uh neighborhood meeting a year right that can be however you want a lot of the hoas kind of just focus on one just depending on you know how much they have going on um but we i mean really that's that's it and for you to complete the annual you know, update every year of course make these meetings um public so anyone within you know your area can attend um and you know just that you're including everyone right we're not going to say only the purple houses with polka dots um everyone can join except them right um so we want to make sure that you're you're being inclusive and that you're you know just just you're there for a benefit for your neighbors and your neighborhood in your area so that's really all that we ask and um, that you have bylaws we yeah. want to make sure that you have bylaws yeah. as well um, and we assist with that and so. if there's uh, any group that's interested in starting a neighborhood association where there's not already one, um, they can definitely utilize our office and we can help them with setting up a public interest meeting to seek the interest of their neighbors. We'll help them with posting on next door, doing robocalls, creating a flyer and writing their bylaws. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of organizations that also struggle with um, leadership or volunteer recruitment. So they can come to our office to get that type of assistance or get um, workshops done one-on-one -on -one with them and their board. And even um, finding, you know, the areas. So when we do those um, public, public interest meetings, you kind of find, hey, this is the area that I'm in. Obviously, almost all of them have already have a name or have had a name in the past. If there's nothing that's been active there in a while, um, you know, it's considered the boundaries are open. And so it's just a certain area. And so when you start getting into those public meetings like that, um we print out a huge map kind of about that big of just that particular area and that particular boundary and what happens is you know we ask people to come sign in um place a dot of where approximately you live so if we're all 
getting people from a certain spot, you know, do we need to just focus on that area? Do we need to focus on expanding more outreach through this, you know, the South or the East or whatever it is? Um, you know, what are we focusing on? Can you reach everybody in this area? If you become an association, are you able to communicate and put that out to everyone in that area? If not, you know, what are the options for that? So I think that's also important because you don't want to um, overstress. <laughs> you know, it can these these people are volunteers, which we appreciate very, very much. And so we try to do different things for them, too, and show them that we appreciate them. Um, but, you know, it's important as well because some people don't, you know, they think of the city and they, some are like, well, I don't trust the city anyways. But, you know, when we come in, we're, we're the type of people that we're like, hey, we are here for you and your community. And this is, you know, how we can work together. This is how we can collaborate. So it is um, a lot of work on both ends, but we are there for support for neighborhoods and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. We appreciate everyone that does it. Um, we love our areas. We love the city of Fort Worth. And, um, you know, whenever we can assist others um, that may need that Spanish speaking barrier, that's kind of where we come in as well and see what we have on our schedule and see how we can help um, our other liaisons um, in their areas as well. And to tie this back to our work group, I think one reason that it has been successful in terms of our attendance is because our employees really feel valued. Um, they feel like their questions are being answered. Sometimes we get questions that we may not have the answer for, and one of those was bilingual pay. And maybe it should increase or maybe employees who are not using it should do away with it and there was a lot of um, a lot of thoughts i'm not going to say it was, it was there was conflict but there was just a difference of opinions um and obviously that's not something that me and brenda can resolve on our own we brought in hr they spoke about um, who receives bilingual pay how do you get it um, if it's something your department can have in their budget and we just basically had a Q and A with them, and I don't think that they valued the fact that we couldn't give them any um, real response to all the issues that they were facing with bilingual pay. But they were appreciative that this group provided them with an outlet to ask their questions, even if the answers were not something that they liked. Mm -hmm. um, but they come to us because with suggestions on different speakers that they want to see. And then they, our employees have great ideas. So I think that they really value this as a, as a resource to uh, make their ideas known. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's great that we're using our employees in that way um, and that we are really emphasizing the ideas that they have to come into fruition. The idea of the city services fair, that was not something that me and Brenda came up with. That was something they came up with that they wanted to do in all our meetings, we focus on, okay, what are gonna be our goals for this meeting? What do we wanna do moving forward? It's always changing, it's always fluid, which is why I think we kinda like the idea of um, transitioning over to an organization because the work group is uh, housed right now within our office and we wanna make sure that this is something that um, employees feel empowered to have a hold of as well. Yeah, for sure. And another thing that we've seen is, um, you know, people will have different um, events kind of coming up and it's getting a lot more of those departments out in the community and, ho you know, having a table there of, of things that people haven't even heard of before, you know, and offering their services, which is great, you know, not just at the services fair, but at different things, you know, if, um, if one of the crime prevention specialists is having, you know, a, a safety fair out in the community, in the North community or whatever it is, um, they're able to kind of get that and like, hey, I know some people that can that might want a table. Can we do this real quick? And so they'll we'll kind of, you know, connect them to that and kind of go from there. We do see that 10 of y'all have um, answered the poll. If you haven't answered the poll, it's the third tab on your right. And the question was, do you know the demographic makeup, makeup of your city? <laughs> And 50% have answered, of course, we're already serving them. 40%, yes, but we could do better. 10%, yes, but we are not currently doing outreach. And no one has answered no. So, yay! Okay. 
we're glad to see that um, that you know who is a part of your city and who you're serving. And I hope that we were able to provide um, some ideas, hopefully, and of things that we've tried. And we're open to network with you if you want to reach out to us through email. If you click on our picture, you can see our email. But if you just want to send us a private message, um, we'd be happy to connect with you. We're always looking for new ideas to help engage our residents, our neighborhoods, um, and also our employees, because we know they're really vital to um, the success of our city. Yeah. And we don't see any more questions, but if you do have a questions, we'll, we'll give you a few more minutes to, to ask them. But if not, I mean, we are thankful for y'all to um, have joined us today. Um, Please don't make news since it's virtual. Don't, you know, don't think you can't come to Fort Worth. Come to Fort Worth, reach out to our office. We'll take a lunch break and show you around or just come in in general. And um, we'll be ha glad to have you here, um, show you around the different areas of Fort Worth. If you're watching those um, neighborhood pride tours, I hope that they were fun. Um, I'm hosting one today. And I know, I think you are as well. Um, so come out and enjoy those. And when you want to come to Fort Worth, come on down. We're, We're here for y'all. Yes. 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 We're here for y'all. Enjoy the rest of the workshops. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.